Hey, what's going on guys? Jared Beckstrand here, Doctor of Physical Therapy at ToneandTitan.com and today I wanted to talk all about muscle knots in your lower back, specifically what they are, why you get them, and about 10 simple exercises that you can do right now at home to help eliminate yours. Let's get started right now. All right, so one of my more popular videos here on YouTube is all about how to get rid of muscle knots in your neck and shoulders and upper back. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description to this video. I'll also drop in a little tag right up here above. You can click that link that's floating around up there and that will take you to that video. That's again, probably one of my more popular ones. However, one of the questions that I'm getting a lot in the comments to that video are, well, this is great for the upper back, what do I do about my lower back? And if my lower back has these muscle knots in it, what are some things that I can do to eliminate tension and to eliminate knots in my lower back? And here you go, you guys. I'm, I'm all about helping you guys out. Let me shoot a quick video about that and show you some things that I like to recommend to patients in order to eliminate these muscle knots in kind of your lower back and in the top of your hip. Now, of course, before we do that, I've got to give you the anatomy lesson and I've got to give you the physiology lesson. So what is a muscle knot? So the muscles in our bodies, the fibers in those muscles are lined up like this. And in the relaxed state, they're nice and elongated and nice and loose like this. In the contracted state, they slide over each other and they come closer together just like this. So relaxed and contracted. What a muscle knot is, it's an area of a muscle, so certain fibers in that muscle that get into this contracted state and then don't let go. And so they, they stay in this kind of, this constant contracted state without that relaxation. That's what causes that tension. That's what causes that pain. You can actually feel it in your back. If you've kind of, you know, feel around in your lower back, if you've got one area that feels tighter than the others, that's most likely a muscle knot that you've got going on back there. There are some things that you can do to get rid of it. That's what I want to teach you about right now. Before we do that, however, let's talk a little bit more about why these muscle knots occur, why you get these muscle knots, so that we can better understand how we treat them. The three main causes that I see why people develop these muscle knots in their lower back are going to be weakness, lack of activity, or like a sedentary lifestyle, and then some postural issues as well. Now, weakness. We all know how important it is to keep a nice, strong core. If your core is not strong and if you develop weakness over time, that's one of those predisposing factors to causing those muscle knots to get tight and then to not let go. And so weakness is a big thing. We're going to show you some strengthening exercises in this video. The second one is a lack of activity or a sedentary lifestyle. Your muscles are designed to move. Your muscles are designed to contract and relax. If you spend all day, maybe Maybe sitting at a desk, sitting on your couch, laying in your bed, whatever you're doing. If you don't live a very active lifestyle, you're not getting that muscle contraction in those areas and then that, is, that can be another reason why those muscles get tight and bound up. So definitely um, a lack of activity is another one. Finally, posture is a big issue as well, specifically what I call a desk job posture. So if you spend all day seated and especially if your hip flexors are in this shortened state and then you stand up and they pull excessively on your lower back, that can be another big predisposing factor for these muscle knots. And so those are the three things that we certainly want to address. We're going to do those with a bunch of exercises. I'm going to go grab my wife, we'll bring her in, and we'll demonstrate, again, about 10 different ways that you can help to alleviate some of these muscle knots and this muscle tension in your lower back. All right, so I brought in my lovely assistant. You guys are used to seeing my wife. She pops up in my videos quite regularly. <laughs> but we're going to run through, again, about 10 different ways that you can treat those muscle knots that you're getting in your lower back. Now, the first thing that I always recommend to people is just some heat on that area. So if you, if you grab a heating pad, and what I'll do is I've got a couple favorites that I like. I'll leave a link in the description to this video. You can click on that. If you don't have a heating pad, between the two of us, we use ours like almost <laughs> All every day. Um, they're great. Yeah. It's a great way to open up capillaries, to promote blood flow into an area, also to promote some relaxation in those knots. And so a heating pad, and so I would just put that down. She would lay on it on her back. Uh, we use it in our chairs, like sitting yeah. up in your chair. It works, works well right there. Leave it on for about 10 or 15 minutes. Take it off for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then you can really do that all day long. So a heating pad is the first thing that you're going to reach for. 
Now, the second thing that we need to do is stretch out some of those tight muscles. So what Camille's gonna do is get down up here on her hands and knees. We're gonna show you my favorite, it's a, it's a popular yoga pose to stretch your lower back. It's called the child's pose. And so she's down on her knees and basically you sit down on your heels, your hands stay out here in front of you, and that's how you're gonna stretch out that lower back. Now, you can. the thing that I like about this is you can actually bias it from one side to another depending on maybe which side your muscle knots are. She's gonna walk her hands over here to the right side, and then if she kind of sits down and to the left, what that's going to do is increase the stretch on the lower left side of her back down here. So you can really kind of facilitate that stretch. A lot of these muscles that you're going to get knots in, basically from your pelvis to your bottom rib with some attachment in your lower spine or in your in your lumbar spine, your lower back right here, anything we can do to kind of pull the pelvis away from the rib is actually going to stretch that out a little more effectively. So that's her over here to the right side. She can also walk over to the left side. That's going to facilitate and enhance that stretch over here on the right. She's going to hold that for about 20 seconds and repeat that about three times. The other stretch that I love, Camille's going to roll over onto her back. Okay. And we're going to do what we call a piriformis stretch. Now, 10 low back pain patients can walk into my clinic, and I guarantee about nine of them are going to have tension through that upper hip, kind of that piriformis area. It's a popular place to get knots in your back or in the back of your hip. To stretch that out, what she's going to do is cross this right leg over her left. With her hand, she's going to reach down and she's going to grab right around the back of that left leg and then pull her left knee up towards her left shoulder. Now, the higher she pulls on that, she's going to feel that stretch correct me if I'm wrong, right through, right, through the top, right through the top of that right glute is what we're going for. That's a good one. And so we're going to hold that in a comfortable position. Same thing, 20 seconds, three times to just try to promote some relaxation in those muscle fibers in there. So those are the stretches that I like. She's going to do it on the I gotta other side. I got to even it out. <laughs> she doesn't walk around in circles. She's got to even it out. Awesome. So then let's get into some actual resisted exercises. We mentioned how, oh, let's go ahead and stay there. I'm sorry. Uh, we mentioned how the, the weakness and the lack of muscle activation are a couple of factors that can predispose you to get these muscle knots. And so let's show you some resisted exercises. We'll even just some body weight exercises to help those out. So on her back, just like this, what Camille's going to do first is we're going to do some bridges. She's going to squeeze her butt together. So contract the glutes and then lift your hips straight up towards the ceiling. And so then it looks just like that. She's going to hold that for about three to five seconds and then come right back down. Now the emphasis here, you really want to focus on contracting your glutes to lift your hips up towards the ceiling, but you're also going to feel a lot of activation in those lower back muscles. This one is safe for, I'd say most people, go ahead and come back down. Most people who are experienced low back pain can tolerate this exercise. This is a popular one that I give out. It's just a great way to strengthen what we'd call the posterior chain, meaning your hamstrings, your glutes, and your lower back. Go ahead and come up again are all active as she's doing this bridging exercise. Typically I'll recommend do that 10 times, uh, 10, 10 reps, and then repeat that for three sets. Just once a day on that one should be adequate for you. Uh, the other one that I like, go ahead, she's going to roll over onto her hands and knees. And we're going to run through what we would call a cat cow or a cat camel. I make a point. I don't. I try not to say cat cow. I don't. I, it, I don't know. There's something about it that sounds offensive to me. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go with a cat camel, sometimes referred to as a cat cow. This is another great yoga pose to just work on stretching and some muscle activation in this lower part of her back. So to get into the angry cat part of the stretch, she's gonna basically raise her back up towards the ceiling as high as she can go. Looks just like that. Hold that for about five seconds, and then she's gonna lower back down. And this is the cow or the camel part of the pose right here. Now, Camille and I have worked enough on this that she does it actually really well. The thing that I see the most often in people is that you get a ton of mobility up here, but not a ton of mobility down through here. This is the area that I really want you to focus on. So she comes back up into that angry cat. What you're going to see is she's actually going to tuck her hips kind of underneath herself. She's going to roll her pelvis underneath herself to really get a good stretch through the back. And then as she comes down into the cow part of the pose, she's actually going to roll, roll her hips, roll her pelvis forward. You can see how much that's really going to enhance that stretch and facilitate that, that motion right through that lower back part right there. And so I tell people about 10 reps on 
this. So you're going to come up and down 10 times, and then that's that's usually good. So about 10 times just once a day on that one. Looks great, just like that. I might not get her out I of some say, it feels good. Nice. Okay, and so those are the stretches and the exercises that I like. Let me show you guys some trigger point release techniques that I like. We're going to get rid of this table. Coming right at you right now. All right, so another great way that you're gonna eliminate these muscle knots in your lower back would be to do some actual, what we call trigger point release techniques. Basically, it's also called an acupressure technique. You, you find that knot, you load it up with pressure, you hold it for a certain amount of time, and what happens is that muscle knot kind of melts underneath that tension or underneath that pressure. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're starving that area of blood flow causing it to relax and to reset, if you will, and then when you release it, blood rushes back in and hopefully what you've done is again help that area to reset. And so what we're going to do is we've got some tennis balls here. Well, I've got a couple. I've got some tennis balls and I've got some golf balls. Camille's going to lay down on her lower back and then what she would do, um, if you just have the, if you just have that, that knot on one side of your back, let's say it's on her, on the right side of her back, she's going to take this tennis ball, roll slightly to her left, and then find where that spot is in her lower back, and then just roll right back onto the top of it. And again, you might have to adjust it up or down, in or out. It shouldn't be right on your spine. It should be just to the side of, of your spine, of your vertebrae column. And then you'll be able to find some of those muscle knots in there. And then what she can do is she can just lay right on that. Now, if a tennis ball is too big, or a, a racket ball or a golf ball works well. Golf ball is obviously a lot harder harder. There's not as much forgiveness with a golf ball, but I wouldn't go necessarily too much bigger than this. The other technique that I like to show people is if you get these, if you get these muscle knots on both sides of your spine, you can actually grab two tennis balls, stuff them in a sock, and now all the sock does is just kind of hold them in place and keep them together so you can roll onto it a little easier. So you can see that depending on how big your spine is or how wide you want those tennis balls to be, you can kind of you know pull them apart or put them closer together. So now she can take that, put one of those balls on each side of her spine, and then you're actually performing this acupressure technique on both sides. And now it's gonna be uncomfortable, that's not the most <laughs> comfortable thing in the world to lay on those balls, but what you do is, again, about 20 to 30 seconds or just until you feel that knot kind of melting away, that's about the recommended amount of time on there. Um, the last thing that you can do, are you doing okay? Is that all right? Lay on those? Yep. The last thing you can do is actually promote what we would call a, a muscle flossing while you're doing that acupressure. And so what she's gonna do is lay one leg down straight, and then simply what you have to do is raise this knee all the way up hmm. and then all the way down. And now what we're doing here and she can even facilitate that by grabbing it. So she's gonna, she's gonna bring it up and then pull and then release. And then bring it up and then pull and then release. And what we're doing there is we're actually promoting some motion in that muscle while we've got that pressure on there. It's a, just a way that we can actually facilitate that release. Oof. What do you think? She hates that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a really good one. Good. It's one who gets muscle knots. You can go ahead and bail off of there. Now, what I never recommend to people, what I see a lot, especially here on YouTube, people will grab their foam roller and say, you've got to foam roll your low back to release those muscle knots. Now, I, I really don't like that. I think the foam roller is great for your upper back, but for your lower back, it's just too big. This is a six inch foam roller and you can see the diameter on this is really big. We've got to get pressure basically between your ribs and your, and your pelvis. That's not really a lot of space. This is too big to fit into that space. The other thing, go ahead and try this out. The other thing, if she were to foam roll her lower back, there's just A, there's no comfortable way to do it. <laughs> But you can see what she's doing. She's she's doing an ab crunch while yes. we're doing it. The idea is to relax and mobilize. You're good. The idea is to relax and mobilize, 
not to sustain an aggressive contraction while you're on a foam roll. And so if it's me, I don't, I don't like to foam roll the lower back. Now, one thing that I do like to foam roll is gonna be kind of the top of the hip, top of the glute, and the piriformis muscle. To do that, she's gonna go ahead and sit up right onto that foam roll. She's gonna cross one leg over the other, and then as she rolls kind of to that right side, put your hands back behind okay. you, there it is, and then we can roll Ooh. up and down over the top of that piriformis muscle that way. Again, a popular, popular, a common place to get muscle knots is in the top of the hip, the top of that glute, this is a great way that you can mobilize and, and uh, kind of get to those muscle knots in those areas, just like that. So don't foam roll your lower back, but definitely foam roll your, your upper glute and your piriformis. Finally, the last thing that I like is going to be one of these Theracanes. Now, again, I mentioned to you earlier that I did another video that was all about muscle knots in the neck and upper back. We kind of introduced the Theracane in that spot. It's a great way that you can just kind of apply that pressure to that spot in your back. But then with this, you can also do it so you can turn it this way and then you can do it with your lower back as well. And so she's going to just grab both handles on that Theracane and find the spot that she wants to massage and mobilize in there. So a pressure point. So then as soon as she finds that trigger point, you would just hold it on that spot to again apply that acupressure into those areas until you get those muscle knots to release. Now again, these Theracanes, this is another one. I had to go get this from our office upstairs just because that's where it's always at. Um, I will leave a, a link in the description to this video for the Theracane as well. That's another thing that will really help you guys out. And so then, um, finally, the thing that we talked about was going to be some posture, um, some posture issues. What I would recommend there, and one more link for you, I'll leave a link in this video. I'll also have it pop up right up here. I've got a video all about um, how, to, how to correct your low back posture. It's got some good exercises, it's got some good stretches, so make sure that you go, just make sure that you go and check that one out. That will be easier. I know this video is getting long. That will be easier. So just go and check that video out. It does a much better job. It goes into a lot more detail than I want to go into right here. So I, I hope you guys check that out. So there you have them, you guys. About, what, 10 to 12 different things that you can do to help eliminate some of the muscle knots and some of the pressure that you feel in your lower back. Again, I give those to my patients all the time. I give those to my wife all the time. <laughs> I do them on myself all the time. They work, you guys. They, they help your back. They're maybe a little uncomfortable at first, but consistency over time yields great results. And so I hope you guys check those out. I hope that they help you out. Hey, I hope you found this video beneficial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below, and thank you so much for those likes in advance. Also, if you haven't done so already, it's a great chance to subscribe to Tone and Titan. I try to share a lot of great physical therapy tips, some rehab tips. I try to answer you guys' questions, those things that you write to me about. This is an easy way for me to, to kind of convey that knowledge to you. So I hope that that helps you guys out. I hope you subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments on this video or anything that we talked about, please feel free to leave that down below on a comment. I'll get to that just as soon as I can. And until next time, we'll see you right back here on Tone and Titan.